Hey everybody, Martin Chuck here, and I'm with Big Jim Waldron, and we are at the studio at the Raven Golf Club. And for those of you following on Facebook and at the Tour Striker Nation, we're testing the Cobra One Length Clubs. And today I've got the, these are called the King F7s. And these are really quite, quite pretty looking. They remind me of another manufacturer that'll go unnamed, but throughout the set they changed from a deep cut that's filled in with some kind of material to actually a hollow iron with metal on the back of it. So this one's hollow pro. Yeah. And that one's obviously got a deep cut back and then it kind of goes more into a normal looking. I believe the, the gap width is more like a blade. Yeah, so Billy, my buddy Billy, asked me to hit four iron to four iron comparison. So this is the forged, I've got my Cobra forged blade and I actually really like these long irons. They've got this is a couple years ago, the Fly Z, it's got a tungsten insert. And you can see if I stand here, if there's any questions, sorry we didn't publish the time we we're going to start this, but this club length is significantly longer than the one club because these are all seven iron lengths. And these get half inch longer as you go into the six, five, and four. So I took a couple swats here at the four iron and I think my speed, which is not epically fast, unlike Jim Walder in here, can just sizzle this thing. Let me see if I can just flush my old four iron out the middle of the face with maximum speed and see what we get here. So that was a little skinny, not gonna lie. So a little pull draw there. So carried 196, 214. So let me see if I can catch one a little bit more solid and maybe get the speed up to a 92, which is about all I'm going to get this four iron up to if I absolutely roast one. That's me trying to smash it, 94. So launch angle 14.3, 194, so a bit of a miss hit there. Felt a little low in the face. Let me see if I can catch one here. And here's the thing about the one length, they're just, a, I seem to hit them a bit more in the middle of the face, Jim, with a bit more regularity because it's a shorter golf club. Yeah, just, just seven irons, right? yeah. and these are long irons I really like and could perform pretty well for me. So that felt pretty good. A little slower speed, launched at 15. So no great shakes there as far as distance. Let me grab the four iron in the one length, and this is the, this is the forged one length, and naturally it feels quite a bit shorter. And I don't know about you, like you seem to, you don't think they're that heavy compared to the set you built, because you know, Jim built a set. Jim, if you don't know this, he's a National Long Drive competitor, he was in the top 64 this year, and uh, should have been farther along there, pro, but hey, well, it's, it's, it's match play, it's the way it goes. Actually, but you didn't think these were heavy enough, I think they're well, pretty was, heavy. Well, for someone like me who generates a lot of speed, I made a wedge set, so I just kind of doctored up a set of the FlyZ Pluses. So 35 and a half inch set? Yeah, about 36, and head weight's around 290. I think the head weights of those are around 270. Okay. Tick lighter, like a normal 7 iron. Gotcha. So this is the one length. Let's see what our numbers are here. So the speed went down a half. Oh, miss hit it to the right a little bit. Launched it just as high. That one went 186 in the air, total 197. Let me hit a couple more here. But I've had these, I've hit these things over 190 in the air. Is that the four iron? This is the four iron. And the smash factor was pretty good on that one. So 90 miles an hour, pretty good shot, fading a little bit. Launched it at 15, so or now it's just adjusted to 14.6. So honestly, I'm not giving up anything with uh, going from this golf club to this golf club as far as landing angles and smash factor. I mean, that height's 98 feet. Granted, I hit a fade out there, but that's a functional shot in play, high smash factor. I mean, yeah, smash. these clubs are very, very hot. The, what, I, what I did notice, Someone wants to do nine irons? Okay. Um, trouble, you know, all I have is my pitching wedge. I grab my old Cobra pitching wedge. So this five iron, this is the F7 set. This is the cast set that's got a little bit more tech, just because I think they can cast things a little bit more interesting. 
and create uh, some different things. So and these look pretty nice. I mean, this is a cast golf club, and I hit this a few times. I haven't played with them yet, but they look good. Again, they're all just a bag of seven irons. But let me hit one for you. Yeah, that's, Whoa. That's it. Higher launch. Hit it up to right field. But again, you know, this, this is a pretty hot golf club. This F7 cast version. Um, and I'm trying to, you know, hit these pretty hard. Not, not a whole lot of regard for where I'm hitting it. I should pay a bit more attention. See if I can get a nice baby draw in there with some reasonable speed. Any other questions on there, Pro? No, just the, uh, yeah, we should definitely hit some shorter stuff. Yeah, for sure. This was just, I was going back to what Billy Orr asked the other day. So that felt pretty good. Let's, I'm going to blame Trackman. We have Trackman missing line. Yeah, <laughs> he might be the, the target. So pretty good carry in total. Again, 90 miles an hour. Every club's about going to go 90 miles an hour because let's see me hit pitching wedge to pitching wedge now. Uh, why don't you grab the pitching wedge I use? Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Get the one that's in my bag because I've got that one. I actually did bend the short irons just a hair flatter because it, it just kind of freaked me out looking at a longer wedge. It looked like I, I started them a little bit left. So I had the uh, guys from True Spec adjust them a little bit. So here's, this, here's my old pitching wedge. And I'll you know, probably swing it in the low 80s. See how far it goes. Eighty-four miles an hour. Pretty good shot. One thirty-one, one thirty-five. So that's about you know if I'm standing there playing a pitching wedge, that's about what I'm going to try to to hit it. Now on the golf course, playing a little mono a mono against Jim, you know I could step this one up a little bit. So once again, this this is just another seven iron to me. This is the one length pitching wedge. So speed went up a bit, elevation went up a bit. I carried it 141, so I carried it seven yards longer. Um, so naturally a bit more speed. So in the Ford set, you know, I guess, Jim, people could, if they found that they were hitting their wedges a little far, they could bump up the, you know, just yes, they bump. Could, they could definitely adjust the loft, or I would say, you know, I don't know how people are with lead tape, but you could maybe add more weight to the head for... Slow it down a little bit. Yeah, because, you know, right. you don't want to... Because 100 to feet, 105 degrees, so landing angle 52 is quite nice. If the greens are firm, that's kind of a nice magic number there. Let me hit another one of these. Let me swing it as fast as I can and see what we get. That should be closer to 90, yeah. So, smoke that one. Height went to 117, carried 141. Let me see if I can't. And obviously the wedge, you know, wedge to wedge, there's that difference in length right there of an inch and a half. I would say people, with, people always coming up short with wedges anyway for, oh, for average players. Totally. They might find that their you know, it's, approach shots are actually going to make it to the green. And it's not a bad thing to actually take a little bit off it too, right? No, absolutely. I don't, you know, I wouldn't, it's weird for me to try to swing a wedge hard. I'll try to get this one up to more speed. It should be 85-ish, oh, 88. So I got my short wedge up pretty fast. Oh, muscles. muscles McGillicuddy. So that's not too far off, 136, 138. My, my longest with the, with the one length pitching wedge was 141, 142. So even though it was that much longer. So I gotta tell you, they've got, They've done a nice job, and what are the pros and cons of one length? Well, to me, you know, you close your eyes and you hand somebody one of these golf clubs, you, you, you give a good player a seven iron and you hand them a four iron, they're gonna feel the difference right away. Club head's gonna feel lighter, they've got a longer club in their hands. You have no idea what club you have in your hand when you take one of these out of the bag, other than the number on the bottom. So you're basically making, you know, you're setting up to it the same way. Somebody asked about ball location, and I'd say it'd be a stock ball location just left of center for the right-handed golfer in all these shots. Now, I think you could play around with launch angle a little bit by bumping the ball location up fractionally for the four iron, five iron. 
And if you wanted to play it down, you know, of course you could play it back a little bit, but I wouldn't go too far back. Um, around the greens, uh, you know, obviously the, the added length feels weird, but then again, it's not that big a deal to go down the grip a little bit and even put the index finger and the thumb right on the steel. And that way you've got, you know, you're a little closer to your work on those short chip shots and so forth. And that's fine too. So, Big Jim, anything to add? Let's, uh, let's go with uh, gap wedge. Okay. And so if we're talking about wedges, what if we had, let's say, if we tried to hit like a 105 or 110 yard sort of number. Okay, so. Whatever you, your gap wedge is, and then we'll see if. Uh, I think it's outside in the bag, but I'll just use, I'll just use pitching wedge, okay? So, so I was. You, you carried it 140, so let's say. Yeah. Like a one, let's say you got 120 and you got it. Sure, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, if I had to hit a little shot that was, if I had to hit a 100 yard shot with this pitching wedge, and I don't know where the target is out there, I'm just going to revert to what I feel. I choke down a little bit just because I don't need all the speed. And let me see if I can dial in a 100 yard shot. I felt maybe a little short of 100, but we'll see. Oh, it's pretty bad. Okay, 106, carry. Okay, so not bad. So, you know, um, give me a number, Jim. Uh, let's go 125. 125, so I might go back toward the end of the grip and create that same kind of three quarter -y feeling. Might be long. 128. That's pretty good. So give me a number, Pro. Uh, let's go 115. 115, okay, I might choke up a hair. And again, three quarter -y feel and, and some kind of a, just hold off finish to a degree. 112. Oh, let's see if he's got it. Oh, a little deep. A little deep. So, but honestly, if you're not, I mean, that, that, that wasn't bad to call your shot yardages, and I uh, think it's good. You know, I don't know. I think I could play these things. I, I've used them a couple times in the course, and I like them. So. Yeah, you did it pretty nice. Yeah. I think uh, I'll keep them in the, in the bag. I mean, I actually like the four iron. You know, to Billy Orr's question, the... It feels, you feel like it's pretty darn, it's short, you know, and it just feels like you're kind of on top of it, and it just, you know, just a little bit easier to stay centered and hit it out the middle of the face. Yeah, and I, and I felt with, um, even with my set that I've doctored up, if I'm, if I'm trying to hit, you know, these longer irons, and like, let's say, just basic run of the middle seven iron, you know, you're playing the ball a little bit forward to center, so if I'm in the four, and I, I might play it a tick up higher, you know, to, in terms of shallowing out, uh, you know, tack angle, not being down as much as you would a seven iron. Right. In terms of the swing, it feels like I'm just trying to hit a slightly higher uh, seven iron, so. Yeah. No, good point, good no, point. These are slick. I like these a lot. They're, good. They're a lot like the... Uh, so the other, everybody always comments, like Tom with Sean and Jacob Bowden came up with a... I've never tried them. You have, and apparently they're very good. Another set of clubs called uh, Sterling Golf. Yeah, very good. They're so really Tom Washon's an awesome club maker designer. So there's another option um, for those of you that are interested in doing that. You know, but I got to say that I think Cobra they should be proud of themselves for what they put out right there. Um, you might need to tweak them a bit. I did. I bent the. I, I needed to bend the short irons a little flatter for me, but I'm a little short. He's not. I'm. I'm an upright guy. Like I'll. Right. I would from you. I would probably go at least three up. Right. Since right. I'm a little taller, and my handle gets pretty high. But yeah, but uh, I think you could do a nice job with these things. And for those of you that don't like long irons, like I always liked them anyway. So I didn't. It. I don't know if it's going to be any benefit for me. Maybe it is. But I just. I just feel like that four iron. I'm going to hit it in the middle of the face more often. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. The other thing I would say for anybody kind of getting into golf, I think it'd be a lot easier just to kind of stand there with the generally same setup. You know, I mean, without having to worry about changing locations and ball location away from you. So, uh, like for my wife, for example, I'm excited for her to try a set because I think if she had maybe a couple of wedges that were shorter and then from gap to, say, six iron for her one length, maybe a hybrid one length, maybe two hybrids at one length that, you know, create different flights for her. And then a, a driver naturally would have to be longer for the speed and then some kind of fairway metal, like a four wood, because she swings at probably 80 miles an hour, 85 miles an hour is her top range with a driver. So 85 on down, I think that would be one length clubs for that type of player. 
and then um, certainly older golfers with back issues. Now I think you're onto something because now nobody likes to nobody likes to get the you know down here and have enough of the shoulder pitch to hit a wedge properly. They all want to kind of take their shoulders and get too much around anyway. So I think there's a benefit for the older golfer with a bit of a bad back. But anyway, thanks for watching. Signing off from the Raven Golf Club in Phoenix. Come see us.